Welcome, Algebra 1 students, to our video on um, writing equations for word problems. More writing equations for word problems. Now we're going to get into the ones that are a little bit tougher. If you've never seen this movie, it's actually super, um, I think it's uplifting. A lot of folks think it's depressing. I think it's great. Um, this is the um, movie Castaway. Um, and this is when he finally makes fire, and he stands up, and I have made fire, and he's very excited with himself. I love that movie. Um, it's a very quiet movie, because there's very little dialogue, because he's, you know, deserted island and all that, but I think that's a great meme, um, and I think that some of you might feel the same way sometimes, because word problems can be daunting, but I'm going to teach you how to organize your approach. The whole idea here is organized approach, so let's take a look at two types of problems, break-even problems, and then defining one value in terms of another. Break-even problems. You are trying to find out when two scenarios are equal. We'll see an example in a minute. When you have a problem like this, you're going to write out each scenario in words. You're going to write what those two scenarios are. You're going to write that down. You're going to write an expression for each one. This is your defining a variable in this type of problem. You're going to set the expressions equal to one another because you're trying to figure out where you break even, where the two scenarios are equal. And then you'll solve the equation. So, let's try an example. The state park charges $6 per person plus $3 per vehicle for parking. The zoo charges, ooh, apparently $2 signs, $3 per person plus $15 per vehicle for parking. How many people will, for how many people will the cost be the same? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, before I even do the rest of my defining a variable, ooh, I don't like that, hold on. Ah, uh, yes, much better. Um, X is going to be number of people in the car. So we will still define the, the x. We're going to continue defining a variable with some more details here. In the car. All right. So we want to know, so cost for the park. That's one of our unknown scenarios here. And the cost for the zoo. That's our other unknown scenario in this problem. So let's say, all right, the cost for the park is going to be $6 per person plus $3 a vehicle. So six per person. Six per person means six times X. Because if it was one person, it'd be X. Two people, um, that's, that's six times two. Uh, three people, six times three, and so on. So six times the number of people. And then the cost for the zoo, I bet you can already figure that out, is going to be 3X plus 15. And we're going to be taking the two and we're going to be setting them equal to one another. So we're going to take 6x plus 3, cost for the park, and we want to know when that's equal to 3x plus 15, cost for the zoo. Now that's a simple equation to solve, so go ahead and do it. And you should get down to 3x plus 3 equals 15, and then 3x equals 12, which means x equals 4. So that means the cost is equal for four people, not fur, but four, four people. And yes, you should write it in a sentence. I apologize for my messy handwriting. All right, so let's try one um, that's similar. You can make whozits for $3 each item, plus $200 for the machine that stamps them out. What's a whozit? Doesn't matter, don't worry about it. If you sell them for $25 each, how many must you make and sell to turn a profit? Now remember, a profit is made when you make more than you spend. When you make more money than you spend. You cannot make a fraction of a who's it. That's going to be important at the end of this problem. So let's, all right, so let's look at, we're going to make X number of who's it's, who's it. And we have the cost of making them I'm going to put W's because I don't want to write out who's it's again, is $3 per who's it plus $200 for the machine that stamps them out. Again, what are they? doesn't matter. And what about the money made or revenue? Revenue. That's a good word. Money made selling. Selling who's it's. Well, that's 25 per who's it. And we want to know when you break even. That's when the cost equals the sales or the revenue. And this is what we'll have to solve. Now, minus 3x, minus 3x. And I can already tell here that this is not going to divide evenly. This is not going to divide evenly. 
So that means I'm going to have to go through and, and do the division here. So divide by 22. And we end up with uh, a little bit more than 9. So it's 9 and like 1 11th, I think. 9 and 1 11th. Okay, or 9 and with remainder of 1, so 1 11th. Okay. Or actually remainder of 2 because it's 22, but you catch my drift. So there's our answer. So the question is, how many do we have to sell to make a profit? Well, if we sell exactly nine, that's not going to be enough. That's not going to be enough because that will cost slightly more than it will make us in revenue. So how many do I really need to sell to turn a profit? This is the kind of problem where the answer to my, the solution to my equation wasn't really the answer. It's actually just thinking about it and saying, oh, well, if nine and one eleventh gets me there, then I must sell 10 who's it's. So let's write a sentence. I'll put it at the top. I must sell 10 who's zits. Has the word zits on it. That's kind of funny. Okay, so break even problems. Expect to see those in class. Let's try another concept. Defining one value in terms of another. So we do not yet know how to solve equations with more than one variable. We are not there yet. You can write them, but you don't know how to solve them to find the solutions. The dirty secret is you need two equations to solve for two variables. But we'll do that, um, I think, second, it's either second quarter or second semester. Yeah, I don't remember. Okay, so if you have multiple unknowns, you have to define one value in terms of another one. So when we have these problems, we're going to write out each unknown in words. We're going to define the smallest unknown with a variable. We're going to build on that variable to define all the other unknowns then we're gonna write an equation and solve. Okay, so let's try an example. Sean sold four more boxes of candy for the fundraiser than Marta. Together they sold a total of 22 boxes. How many did they sell individually? Okay, so we're gonna use X. Well, let's write out our two unknowns, okay? Boxes, let's say number of, let's do number of boxes sold by Sean not putting anything down yet, and number of boxes sold by Marta. So, who sold fewer? Sean sold four more boxes than Marta. So Sean sold more, Marta sold fewer. I'm gonna use X for her. Now how can I describe, or how can I define what Sean sold based on what Marta sold? If Marta sold X, and Sean sold four more, then Sean sold X plus four. Okay, so now, together, they sold a total of 22. So, Sean plus Marta, a total of 22 boxes. And now we'll go ahead and solve. So I didn't need the parentheses, I just wanted to kind of distinguish between them, Sean and Marta, so we could see that we're not actually adding x twice, we're adding the two values from the problem, the number Sean sold and the number Mar that Marta sold. Combine your like terms, you have 2x plus 4 is equal to 22, subtract 4 from each side, 2x equals 18, divide by 2, x equals 9, and we can finish out with Sean sold Oh, hold on. Let's do Marta first. We'll go back to Sean. Marta sold nine boxes. Sean sold four more than that. What's nine plus four? Well, Sean sold 13. Now remember, real quick, even though you might be absolutely brilliant and be able to do this in your head, the equation is the deal here, guys. I want you to be able to write the equations for these because they're not always going to be easy in your head. And you do need to have some arsenal of weapons in order to be able to solve these problems. And I don't mean like an arrow, like a quiver full of arrows or anything. This isn't Zelda. Um, this isn't, what is it? Yeah, Zelda is the name of the game. I had to take a second. His name is Link, Princess Zelda. Sorry, took me a minute. This is not a question where I'm asking you just to be able to solve it. I want you to be able to write the equations, okay? We got two more questions to look at. No, oh, I lied. We only have one more question to look at. Isn't that awesome? Okay, 
But this is an age problem, and this is defining one value in terms of another, and these can be daunting. So I want you to take your time. We're going to write it all the way out, work it all the way out together, and I promise we'll do lots of practice with these in class. Okay, Glenda is one year older than 11 times her son's age. In nine years, Glenda will be seven more than three times as old as her son. How old is Glenda now? I know your brain probably just kind of imploded, but that's okay. Let's write out our four unknowns. We have four unknowns here, okay? Glenda's age. We don't know how old she is now. Okay, Glenda's age. The son's age. Then we have Glenda's age in nine years. In nine years. And then we have the son's age also in nine years. All right, so those are our four unknowns. What was the next direction? It said pick the smallest one and give it the variable. That's going to be the son's age. So we'll make him X. Now how old is Glenda in, compared, in, in comparison to her son? That's in the first sentence. She is 11, no, one year older than 11 times his age. So she is one year older than 11 times his age of X. So she is 11X plus one. Now, this is not a trick. This is this easy. In nine years, don't read anything else. Let's write these down here. If Glenda, no, let's do the son first. If the son is X years old now, how old will he be in nine years? Well, he'll be nine years older than X. He'll be X plus nine. Well, how old will Glenda be in nine years? Well, she'll still be the 11X plus one already, and then she'll be nine years older than that. So in other words, she'll be 11X plus 10 years old. I know that sounds awkward. Like, how old are you? I'm 11X plus 10 years old. Um, that's weird. Okay. Um, but it, it works. Okay, it works. All right, now. Now we write our equation. So I know there's a lot of steps to this. I know it's tricky, but don't worry, we'll practice. Now we write our equation. Okay, so the in nine years ages, those are the ones we're, we're using. Glenda will be is my equal sign. Remember we said any derivation of the verb to be or is, is your equal sign. So Glenda's age, Glenda's age in nine years is 11x plus 10. She will be seven more than so, plus seven. Seven more than what? Seven more than three times as old as her son. So seven more than three times as old as the son. Now notice the parentheses. How old is the son in nine years? He is, we have that right here, x plus nine. And that's our equation to solve. Now, I know you're like, Miss Compt, you made that look really easy. But remember, it, it's all about practice, practice, practice. We will do more of these in class. Distribute. Combine like terms. 11x plus 10 equals 3x plus 34. Subtract the smaller value of the variable. 8x plus 10 equals 34. Subtract 10 from each side. Whoop. 8x equals 24, which means x equals 3. Now, halt, time out. That's not our answer. Glenda's the mom, remember? Go back to the beginning. Go back to the problem. How old is Glenda now? We want her age now. Where can I find that on my screen? Where can I find that on my screen? Well, right here. Glenda's age now is 11x plus 1. So it's 11 times the x we found plus 1. So she's 33 plus 1. Glenda is 34. Oh, Glenda is 34. And that concludes our video, my friends. I hope you're not too stressed out over these. But, but look, there's not going to be a homework quiz on it. Okay? There's not. We do have a quiz plan, but it's not a homework quiz, and it's not on this. Not yet. And we will get to the point where we can handle taking assessments with this material. Okay? No stress. No freaking out. There's lots and lots of sample problems we can practice, and we will do a bunch in class. So I'll see you guys in class.